Hi everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Album. A couple of weeks ago I made a video showing how I make covers for my mini albums. And this is a follow-up to that tutorial showing you how I make the hinges. And this is also going to be the hinge that I use for my next mini album. So I'm going to link that in the tutorial so you can make the hinge the same as I did. Now I also want to show you a uh, a different hinge system. This is designed by Tamara Merrill from Country Craft Creations. There was a discussion in a Facebook group about it, so I had told people I would show you how I make her version of the hinge, and I'll also link in the description box where you can see her making her hinge. Now the hinges she made with what I'm going to link are quite wide. There is three-eighths of an inch gusset, and it's because in this that she was making the pages rather chunky. So let me show you what we need as far as supplies and what I use. So let's start with uh, glue. So you can use either the liquid adhesive or the uh, double-sided tape. The liquid adhesive I use is the Designer Dry Clears Adhesive from the Art Glitter Company. I generally use this uh, for every part of my hinge and a lot of my cover. Now I used to use the score tape and it is acid free, heat resistant, double sided, clear adhesive and I did used to use this for many many albums but then I found out it really was overkill and some people were concerned about going into different environments whether it was very humid or what. And the thing about score tape is if you use it and that's fine it, it will work make sure you burnish it real well that's all. Um, so those are the two adhesives that you can choose from. And like I said, I generally won't use the score tape. I will go and use the Designer Dries Clear Adhesive from the Art Glitter Company. Uh, another thing that uh, you may choose to use, a different one, is the different stylus for burnishing your score lines. So this is a combination paper cutter and scoring tool and this is perfectly fine to use the only thing i'll caution you about is that you make sure your papers stay very straight because you're going to be moving your papers for every score but it really would work so this is an option and especially if you're short on space what i generally use is this um well for this scoreboard i use this martha stewart scoreboard there's We Are Memory Keepers, there is the Score Pal Scoreboard, which has a great surface on it too. I mean, they're basically all the same. They're all, the measurements are fine. It's whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you want to use. So yes, this stylus I use is from Cricut. I don't even think they sell it anymore. I like it because it's got this metal tip. It can be very sharp, so you have to remember to use the side of it as opposed to the very point. Um, it just seems to be what I pick up. Now you can use a regular stylus. You have to find one that doesn't have too fine of a point. That might be a little bit too fine. Uh, the ball on the end is what I would use. It's a little bit thicker. I don't know what the millimeter size is, but I've seen them sold in a pack of three. So it gives you uh, six different options because there's two on each one. So just practice with paper and see which one will give you a good score line but you don't want one that's going to poke through the paper and then the final thing and I'll pick this up sometimes this is a dress your craft nonstick um, bone folder scoring tool uh, the good thing about this is you can sharpen it with sandpaper and emery board or whatever uh, it doesn't leave any marks on your paper sometimes you get some shiny marks uh, and I use their bone folder all the time but sometimes my hand will slip on there. But the good thing is you can use it to burnish the paper. Uh, and I use this for making flowers and all sorts of different things. So it's a very handy scoring tool to have. Um, and it gives you whatever kind of point you want. So there is that option as well. So just I would use what you have right now and go from there. All right, let's make a hinge. My paper is 11 inches by seven and three eighths. I have the 11 inch side at the top. You could use 12 inches, it's no big deal. 
uh, in the seven and three inch side at the side. I have it at seven three eighths because my pages are going to be seven and a half, so I just have it a smidgen smaller than that. It's important that your paper is going to be flat against this edge and flat against the top. If you're not sure your paper is uh, cut straight, because paper does not always come out of the package perfectly square, then cut off uh, a little on all four sides, making sure that it's going to stay perfectly square when you are doing scoring. So I am doing uh, five pages, half inch hinges, and a three eighths inch gusset. So there will be four gussets and five pages. So let's get started. So I'm going to start at two, two and a half, three, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and one eighth, six and five eighths, seven and one eighth, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. It's easy for me to do that because I typically are going to do five pages with a three-eighths inch gusset and half inch page hinges, but also I have made marks on my scoreboard, not the dirt, that's glue, but um, I just used a Sharpie to make marks where my uh, normal hinges are going to be, so if I'm going fast and doing some quick hinges, uh, I've got a cheater method. Okay, so now I've got my uh, paper with, here's a hinge, here's a gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. So, just so you can um, visualize where we're going to be. Now what I like to do is first fold in between each hinge. So I'm going to turn my paper over. Here are two half inch marks. And I'm going to fold the paper away from me, making sure it's straight by lining up the edge of the pages, the side of the pages, and burnishing. So I'll burnish in between each half inch piece. So here's the next set of half inch hinges. I will fold there away from me. And you could use either side of your, if you have one of these dresser craft bone folders, either use this side or this. I, I, it, I'll do both. Here's another hinge. Fold in the center. Make sure the paper is lined up. And burnish. The fourth hinge. And the final hinge. So now you can see there's slight shadows uh, where my hinges are. I haven't applied any glue. I just burnished in between the two hinges. What I do next, I don't know if everybody does this, but this is how I do it. Put my thumbs down to hold the paper in place. I take my fingers and I pull the paper towards me. And what that does is that makes this hinge come up, creating more of a point and then I can grab it, pinch it, fold it together, and I fold it towards me down, towards the top, uh, and away from me down. So I've got a hinge that just is, again, just folded, no glue. And I'll continue and do the same with the other four hinges. Fold it and fold it. Now I will just use a 3 8 of an inch gusset because most of my pages don't have quite that many flaps or I don't add flowers to my pages to make it bulky. If you start adding really big dimensional uh, things like foam stickers or whatever, then a 3 8 of an inch gusset is not going to be enough. So here are my five hinges all facing up. And then I will need to start gluing. So I am using my liquid adhesive. 
and I'm going to do just one hinge at a time and show you how I do it until I've explained enough. So I'm not going to start right at the edge. I start about a quarter of an inch away and just sort of zigzag. And then I will take uh, a bead of glue and glow, go towards the top of the paper. Now I'll turn this over again and I'm just working on this one hinge that I've glued and I pinch it together, move the glue around and if any comes out at the edge then I will clean it up. I shouldn't clean it with my fingers because it'll get on the hinges but clean it up. Because I don't put it at the very edge of the hinge it usually doesn't seep out. It depends on how heavy-handed you are with the glue. So again I go all the way down, zigzag down and then go to the top. You could put a bead of glue in the very bottom which will be the top of the hinge. It, it doesn't doesn't make a difference. So I squeeze it together and then fold it a little bit. Just move the glue around. So I have two hinges. Now because I've done this several times before, I can go ahead and add glue throughout the whole hinge. Do the next one and add glue. And you can only do this if you're A, not in a really dry environment and B, have practice and know what you're doing. If you're unsure of yourself, just do one at a time because you don't want the glue to dry. Um, it would make it, make, it, make it start creaking. It will dry too fast and you'll be frustrated. It won't stick. So just do one at a time until you're comfortable with it. All right, so I have all of my hinges glued. So there's the bottom, there's the top. I'll go ahead and grab, first of all, I'll put my uh, pin on my glue real quick. Move this out of the way, and then I will take my bone folder and push all of the hinges away from me. Did they all stick? Yes. The paper does not look straight to me. Um, but I will burnish and if there's any glue that comes out go ahead and clean it up right away. So there's one and I'll pull them all towards me and burnish it again. And then I'm going to fold them all the opposite way and then take this part of the bone folder and then one more time this way and just burnish. It helps move the glue around and it also helps train your hinges to fold back and forth. And so that's it. That is how I make my hinges to put in my mini albums. It's just a process I've made, um, done over the years, and it's what works for me. And that is how I put my, make my hinges. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I make the hinge using some of Tamara Merrill from Country Craft Creations method of doing this. So we're going to start with a piece of cardstock that is, I'm going to put a link in the description box of, uh, so you can watch her do it, but she made this very large hinge. It's uh, about four inches wide, so you'll need about four and a quarter, four and a half inch wide spine on your mini album, which is really huge for me. I, I just uh, don't make them that big, but this is for a December daily and you would have a lot of pictures for Christmas time. So I can understand having it. There's three quarters of an inch in between each hinge. So your gusset is three quarters of an inch. And that's good if you're going to do really thick pages. This is where if you're going to put flowers and things, you don't mind it. So anyhow, let's take our page seven and three eighths by six and a half. So we'll put the seven and three inch side to the side of our scoreboard. Okay, again, make sure your six 
and a half inch uh, side is at the top and your seven and three eighths at the side. So start at half an inch, then one, then one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, two and three eighths, two and three quarters, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and an eighth, four and five eighths, five and one eighth, five and a half, and six. All right. Now what you do is you need to take your paper, we'll fold it in a second, but you need to take your paper and put it in your paper trimmer and cut a hair off of each side. Now if you want, you can fold those first two folds on each side and see exactly how much. I'm cutting off about a 30, well, it's about a 16th of an inch. That's too much, to be honest with you. You just want a hair off so when you fold that first spine on either side, you're not going to get any overhang. So go ahead and trim a little bit off, and then we're going to fold. So Tamara folds as she goes. Uh, let's start folding that first half inch towards you. See, and there's a lot of room left there, so when you fold that, um, there's no overhang. It will lay flat. So then bend the next one away from you. And then we have the gusset. So fold away from you again. And then fold towards you. Now well, I turned it over. But you have to be cognizant of where your hinges and gussets are and just fold as you go. So we have the two hinges and a gusset. Now there's another gusset. So we're going to fold on that gusset away from you. And then there's the hinge. So fold towards you and then away from you for the top of the hinge and then away from you to fold that hinge. And that one's towards you, towards you. Whoops, fold it towards you. So do we have another hinge we're making? And then fold that hinge. So if this is your first time making a hinge, it, you just have to, again, know you have two hinges and the gusset. And the gusset's going to be glued flat down onto your spine, the inside of your spine. And then with the Tamra's method, there is no wings, as they call them. All you have is a set of hinges. And then let's go ahead and I'm going to just quickly glue everything. You would do a better job of gluing than I do. And that's the part that's going to lay down. And then that's the part that's going to be facing you to put your pages onto. So I'll grab my glue. And just put it in between each of the hinges. And be more generous than I am here. I'm just going real quick just to show you what it's going to look like when it's all done. This is really just a throwaway piece for me. And I'm just going to burnish them with my fingers, then lay it flat, use my bone folder to burnish. See, there's a little bit of the paper. You can see where I've cut it off. 
and you don't again you don't need to cut off as much as I did and there we go it's a pretty hinge and all you have is hinge it's a very clean cut look so obviously you can see the difference I have the wings so you might say I'm using extra paper and I guess I am um, with hers though you don't have the bulkiness on the mini album it's just the the hinge is going to go onto your pages your pages should open up easier and there you go so that is the difference between the two hinges I again will link in the description box uh, one of the tutorials if you go to country craft creations make sure you go to the live because most of her tutorials lately are live and there you have it. There's my lesson on hinges. I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day.